In this lesson, we're looking at the foundations of circular motion using vector calculus. So we're going to start by considering something that we already know. So we're going to consider the vector function for a circle. Okay, so we should know this already, that the position at any point is equal to r cos theta in the i direction and r sine theta in the j direction. So we know that that gives us for a circle of radius r position at any point on the circumference based on the angle theta. Now if we're looking at dr dt which is our velocity function then we immediately have an issue because this is referring to the angle, but we're looking at a time in reference to the angle. So in order to find this differentiation, we need to be able to link the angle and also time. So this is where we delve into a little bit of implicit differentiation or utilizing the chain rule in a different way. So if we consider d dt, we can break that up and include a, a third variable. So we can say this is d and dt. So we haven't changed it as long as we fill in the two remaining spots with the same variable. So if we say this is d theta and d theta, then that means it's not going to change. And if we look then at d dt of sine theta, then we can say that's d d theta of sine theta multiplied by d theta dt and we end up with negative cos, and we end up with cos theta multiplied by the rate of change of the angle. Now if we do the same thing, the rate of change um, with respect to t of cos theta, we'll have to go d, d theta, so rate of change of the angle of cos multiplied by the rate of change in angle with respect to time. So we end up with negative sine theta multiplied by d theta dt. Now, importantly here, this d theta dt, we usually call this omega, and what it is, is our angular frequency. And so what we're saying there, that's the amount of radians, or the angle that it goes through for a given period of time. So we can say this is actually omega cos theta, and this is omega of negative omega sine theta. That means now all of a sudden we can find the derivative with respect to time. So if we're looking at the derivative with respect to time of this initial um, position function, and we've got r cos theta in the i direction and r sine theta in the j direction, we end up with dr dt which is our velocity, r multiplied by the derivative with respect to t of cos theta, and we know that that is going to be negative omega sine theta in the i direction, and r multiplied by the derivative of sine with respect to t, which we know is omega cos theta in the j direction, and now we have our velocity vector which is negative omega r, and we've got sine theta in the i, and subtract cos theta in the j. Now, if we think about the magnitude of this velocity vector, we should see that we'll get the square root of omega squared r squared sine squared, and omega squared r squared cos squared. Now if we take out the common factor of omega squared r squared, we're left with sine squared and cos squared on the inside, which means we have, which means we have omega r multiplied by square root of 1, so it just ends up as omega r. So that means our magnitude of the velocity will be equal to omega multiplied by the radius. 
Now, this is a very important relationship. Along with this understanding that the theta dt is what we call our angular frequency, we can also say that the angle is equal to omega multiplied by t, where when t equals zero, the angle is equal to zero. Okay, so all of that together allows us to start thinking about uniform circular motion. That is, that the angular velocity is constant. So this is what we're going to work in through this topic. So if we go back to what we started with, we have the function with respect to the angle at any point is going to be r cos theta in the i direction and r sine theta in the j direction. Now our problem is we don't want it with respect to theta, we want it to be with respect to t. So if we have r with respect to t, we can now replace this theta, and this theta is actually equivalent to omega t. So we can say this is r cos omega t in the i direction, and r sine omega t in the j direction. Now this is a function with respect to time. Now throughout this topic, this is going to be our starting point. Now from there we can easily say that the derivative of that, it's an easy derivative now because it's with respect to t, is going to be omega r or negative omega r sine omega t in the i direction and omega r cos omega t in the j direction. Now if we find the second derivative which will give us the acceleration function, we get negative omega squared r cos omega t in the i direction and negative omega squared r sine omega t in the j direction. And if we take out this common factor negative omega squared r, we should see a relationship between this and the original position. And so the original position is that r cos omega t, r sine omega t, so we can say that it's negative omega squared multiplied by the initial position vector. So we could say that the acceleration is negative omega squared multiplied by the position vector. Okay, so that's the lead in, that's the, that's the concept behind what we're going to be working on. And that concludes the lesson on the introduction to circular motion.